Able's in on air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners with Ableton On Air include Yachad, New York, and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, and the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Abel Dinonaire has been seen in the following publications, Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www. Ableton On Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. On, um, and we would like to thank our uh, wonderful sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and uh, many others, including partners with the Orthodox Union, Yihad New York, of, uh, Yihad New York in New England, and the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Um, on today's program, we will focus on Lewis Braille, um, so, now, so let's get started. Uh, Louis Braille uh, created Braille, of course, and he was born on January 4th, 1809, uh, and died um, uh, January 6th, 1852. He was a French educator and inventor of a system of reading and writing for use for the blind and visually impaired. His system remained virtually unchanged to this day and is known worldwide simply as Braille. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna show some pictures. Um, Braille was, was blinded at the age of three in one eye as a result of an accident <clears throat> with, uh, with a stitching awl in his father's harness making shop. Um, Consequently, an infection set in um, and spread to both eyes, resulting in total blindness at the time that um, there, there were not many resources in place for the blind, but nev nevertheless he excelled in his education and received a scholarship to France's Royal Institute for Blind Youth. While a student there, he began developing a system of tactile code, tactile code, sorry, tactile C, I mean, T-A-C-T-I-L-E code that could allow blind people to read and write and quickly effectively inspire, but uh, quickly and efficiently, sorry, inspi inspired by the military uh, 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 crip, uh, crip, uh, the writing called Cryptography, uh, C, wait, C R Y P T O Graphy, uh, a cryptography by Charles Barbier. Braille constructed a new method, um, built specifically for the needs of the blind. He presented his work to his peers of the, in the first time in 1824. In adulthood, Louis Braille served as professor at the institute in which he had um, avocation as a musician, but he largely spent 
the remainder of his life refining and extending the system of Braille. It went unused by most educators for many years after his death, but posthumously has been recognized as a revolutionary invention and has been uh, adapted for use in different languages worldwide. Louis Braille was born in Cuvier, France, about 20 miles of Paris on the 4th of January, 1809, uh, with, the th with three elder siblings, okay? Um, yeah. As soon as he could walk, Braille, <clears throat> Braille's time was spent playing with his father in his father's workshop. At age of three, he was playing with some of the tools, um, trying to make holes, uh, with a piece of leather and an awl. Squinting closely at the surface, he pressed down with some of the tools, trying to make holes in a piece of, le uh, in a piece of leather. Um, the next day, uh, a surgeon um, with no treatment couldn't shave the damaged organ in terms of the eye. In agony, the young boy suffered for weeks uh, as, the, as the wound became severely infected. He eventually lost sight in the other eye due to um, symptom, symptom, symptomatic uh, ophthalmia. I can't pronounce that. Um, Braille survived the torment of the infection. By the age of five, he was completely blind in both eyes. Um, Did that have, you something? Yeah. Did they have black canes in those days? Um, no, mainly wooden canes. I don't think they came up with blind canes yet. Um, but we can do the history of the blind cane. That that can be part of this. Um, so. Well, you well, you, you use one. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Braille system was determined to invent a, uh, Braille was determined to invent a system of reading and writing because uh, we can show pictures of Braille um, that could bridge the gap of communication between sighted and the blind in his um, in his own words access to in his own words he said that access to communication in the widest sense to knowledge it, that is vitally important for us the blind are not to go on being this despised despised or patronized by condescending sighted people not um not need pity or that we uh, needed to be reminded we are vulnerable. Um, we must be treated as equals and communicate the way we can and the way this can be brought about. In 1821, Braille learned a new communication system devised by Captain Charles Barbier of the French Army. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, let's, let's go down. Uh, wait. Um, okay, in 1824, when he was 15 years old, from Barbier's night riding, he uh, innovated and simplified a form by maximizing the efficiency of the dots. He made uniform columns for, uh, for each letter, and he reduced the 12 raised dots of six. He published the system in 1829. By the second edition in 1837, he had discarded the dashes because they were difficult to read. Crucially, Braille's smaller cells were capable of being recognized 
as letters with a single touch of the finger. You have anything to say about that? Oh, I, I know who invented the, um, the, the blind cane. Go ahead. Richard E. Hoover, a sanitary need for using a white cane, <laughs> was pioneered in 1944 by Richard E. Hoover, a World War II veteran rehabilitation specialist. His technique of holding a long cane in the center of the body and swinging it back and forth for each step to detect obstacles is still called the Hoover method. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who is the who invented Richard E. Hoover, the third cousin? No, but there has to be more about that. No, it's called the Hoover method. That's what he he invented the white cane in 1944, pioneered it. Mm-hmm. And it's still today called the Hoover Method. Yes. Um, he invented a, a, a white cane mm-hmm. in, in 1944. Okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but now the cane, uh, next time we can talk about that. Um, but, yeah, there's several people that, James B. Biggs, uh, James Biggs of Bristol claimed to have vented the white cane in 1921. After an accident, he claimed his sight. His sight. Um, the artist had to readjust to his environment. Feeling threatened by increased motor vehicle traffic around his home, Biggs decided to paint his walking stick white to make him more visible to motorists. Now, according to the American Council, uh, American Council for the uh, Council for the Blind, um, and according to AFB, um, yeah, um, the following is a short history of the white cane written by Philip Strong. Okay, um, um, American Council for the Blind. So let's. Um, here, I can, I don't, this is a long thing, so I don't, uh, we can, um, uh, there was a special white cane ordinance or law passed in 1930 in Peoria, Illinois. It granted blind pedestrians yeah. uh, protections for the right of way while carrying a white cane. In 1935, Michigan began promoting the white cane as a visible symbol for the blind. On February 25th, 1836, an ordinance was passed by the city of Detroit recognizing the white cane. Um, to promote a new ordinance, the uh, demonstration was held at City Hall where blind and visually impaired people were represented by white canes. The following year, Donald Shore wrote the position of a bill and had it promo- proposed by Michigan State Legislature. The proposal gave the carrier of the white cane protection while traveling on the streets of Michigan. Uh, Governor Frank Murphy signed the bill into law in March 1937. During uh, the early 1960s... Was, 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 was there any blind president? Good question. Blind, blind, what, what was his name? Blind, blind, man. blind presidents. Wait. No, that blind governor we had. The black one who, uh, who, who got into trouble. What was his um, name? Patterson, Patterson. Pat Patterson, yeah. Blind he, he president. Was blind. He was blind, yeah. I don't think we ever had any blind presidents, but let me see. I know, but we had a blind governor, Patterson. Uh, no, Theodore Roosevelt. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Theodore Roosevelt, our 26th president, was myo uh, was myopic or nearsighted and was blind in one eye from a retinal detachment. George A. W. Bush, our 43rd president, and only one still living, well, um, has glaucoma. Uh, well, he's not living. Uh, I don't think. Well, the father's not living. The mother's dead too. The H W. Uh, the, the son is alive. The son. They have him here, still living, but he's not living. Mm -hmm. Uh, they need to change that. The son is still alive. But uh, President Lincoln um noted that his left his left eye at times. President Lincoln noted that his left eye at times upward independently of his eye, uh, a condition now now determined as uh, as stra as strap as strapsimus. Um, Lincoln noticed double vision only occasionally and did not bother him a great deal, said Fishman a retired Washington optometrist and history buff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, so, um, since we have 10 minutes left, let's, uh, for those, um, that want information about services for the blind here in Vermont, since we're on the topic, uh, the Vermont, uh, Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired is in the state of Vermont, and we can um, go over the the number and uh, and the. Um, well, the Helen Keller School in Brooklyn. Yeah, but then uh, we're talking about Vermont services. Okay. What's the one in New York? Uh, what's the one? Um, you should get services for them. Anyway, let anyway, um, uh, and, vision, vision, vision. yeah, vision services for the blind. But we're talking about Vermont. But for those that want information about any services of Vermont from the from the blind and visually impaired, uh, you can go um, to the following location. Um, uh, they're one of the main locations is um, HC 2 South, 280 South, uh, 280 State Drive, what, Waterbury, Vermont, 05671. Um, and, th and their number, their number is 802-405-5005. I'll repeat it again. Their toll-free number is one eight 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 four zero five five zero zero five. Um, and um, for more information and general contact, uh, for Dale or um, the um the division for independent living, elderly and independent living, or um DVBI, it's. Eight is a h s dot dale d v b i um info at vermont dot gov. That uh, email again is a h s dot dale d v d b v i info at vermont dot gov. Um, and for more information on Lewis Braille and his work or anything that we have spoken about today, you can go to Wikipedia and there's plenty of information there. Uh, we would like to thank um, the following uh, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, um, and supporters such as Yachad New York and New England, the Orthodox Union, and um, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and we are also members of the um, National Academy 
For Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, we would also like to thank the Muslim Community Report, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, and the Parchester Times. Um, this puts an end to this edition of Ableton on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time. Ableton On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners with Ableton On Air include Yachad New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, and the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Able Din on Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Able Din on Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter.